another potential injury to add to the seemingly long list of injuries strongly linked to heel strike running is tarsal tunnel syndrome. The tarsal tunnel is a narrow space that lies on the inside of the ankle next to the ankle bones. Tarsal tunnel syndrome is a repetitive strain injury that occurs when the posterior tibial nerve, which is a nerve innervating deep within the calf and extends into the foot, becomes compressed, which is also known as nerve entrapment. Tarsal tunnel syndrome symptoms typically include burning or tingling pain in the ankle, foot, and sometimes the toes during running. But how does heel strike running increase the risk of this particular type of pain problem as compared with forfeit strike running? One explanation came from a 1993 study in the journal Sports Medicine, which is linked down below this video in the description box. The researchers trace the condition of tarsal tunnel syndrome to runners who ran with a large overstrike angle coupled with a hyper dorsiflexed foot at touchdown, which is all shown here. Dorsiflexion of the foot means the front of the foot is lifted up, like shown here, where the forefoot and toes are lifted up when the foot initially connects with the ground. This action of the foot at landing when running is mostly what heel strike runners do in order to strike the ground heel first. Furthermore, the more the front of the foot is cranked back at landing when running, the longer the overstride angle tends to be at landing. Overstriding means initial foot strike position is ahead of the ankle, knee, and hips, the hips also being the center of mass. One problem with this specific landing configuration during running is that it produces a burst of a collisional force that exceeds several times the body weight. This collisional force is also prolonged in duration, which means the body comes to an abrupt dead stop at touchdown and does so for a long period of time, of which the weight of the entire body times three is drilling down onto the foot and leg for an extended period of time. Out of this, a high amount of compressive loading is more likely to be produced on the foot and the lower leg. These increases in compressive loading during running was found to cause compartment pressure in the foot and the lower leg to rise to pain inducing levels. To that point, when compartment pressure exceeds tolerance inside the tarsal tunnel, nerve entrapment can easily occur because the tarsal tunnel is a highly fibrous and structurally inflexible, therefore there's limited room for swelling to occur. In that regard, factors proven to reduce compartment pressure during running includes preventing excessive compressive loading at landing, of which an obvious place to start to achieve just that outcome is to greatly minimize the time spent breaking at each step on account of the time spent breaking at touchdown during running is directly related to the amount of compressive loading produced, which has the direct effect on compartment pressure levels in the foot and the lower leg. Luckily, research has hinted how forfeit strike running may bring full resolve to injuries caused by too much high levels of compartment pressure, like tarsal tunnel syndrome, because forfeit strike running reduces the mechanical stressors that cause higher levels of damaging compartment pressures. For instance, landing with a forfeit strike when running instantly engages less foot dorsiflexion upon it at touchdown, meaning the front of the foot points up less before striking the ground. Less foot dorsiflexion upon landing during running also has a very big effect on helping shorten the distance between initial foot strike position and the hips, which is the center of mass. This positional arrangement at touchdown during running has consistently been proven to be a mechanical component in reducing collisional impact, thereby preventing excessive compressive loading from being produced. This is because the shortened distance between initial foot strike position and the center of mass effectively enables the weight of the body to spend less time stuck in break mode with the leg at touchdown. By this measure, so little compressive loading is produced and so compartment pressure in the foot and the lower leg remains exceedingly low. It's also worth noting that this fits strikingly well with what's already known about the starring role forfeit strike running plays in fully resolving a painful lower leg condition known as chronic exertional compartment syndrome, which is a very common condition in heel strike runners and is caused by big increases in compressive loading, which causes compartment pressure to exceed tolerance threshold. 
my video on the research showing just how poor fit strike writing was found to prevent that particular condition is linked down below this video in the description box as well. All in all, this is an important example of how foot strike pattern during running strongly influences impact production, partly because of how foot strike pattern alone directly influences other aspects of your stride mechanics, which is a very well sourced connection. Moreover, because of the extreme contrast in the production of certain impact force variables between forfeit strike running versus heel strike running, really hints that the leg and foot may be less burdened by harmful impacts in forfeit stride running because of its main effect on keeping certain stride parameters and therefore certain impact force variables within a safer range of tolerance. And from this, forfeit strike running may really do a better job at playing more of a supporting role that sustains better long-term and attracting less injuries as compared with heel strike running. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't already, where you will stay more informed on the hot button debate, heel strike running versus forefoot strike running. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Have fun out there on the roads and trails. Bye for now.